Friends, welcome to my workplace for hands-on FACO and SICS training. This is a cat tract with grade 3 nuclear sclerosis. Let us see management of this case. This is a site port at 2 o'clock and this is the main incision at around 11 o'clock with 2.8 millimeter steel keratom. Now inject an air bubble and beneath this air bubble tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. A bit of adrenaline is injected and the dye is washed out with a Simcoe cannula. It becomes a nice job if we clean the dye out. And now the antechamber is filled up with Fisco. Go to high magnification and do capsulorexis. While doing the capsulorexis, I notice a black area just under the side port uh, here and suddenly I see a red glow through this and I get sure that there is genular dehiscence, yes, there you can see a red glow through the genule. So there is genular dehiscence, I use Kenacort to see if I can stain the vitreous strands and as I use the Simco cannula to clean the anterior chamber, I find that a knuckle of vitreous is protruding into the anterior chamber. Once we press the surface of the cataract and when we feel the anterior chamber, it goes back. Inject some visco. I ask for a vitrectomy cutter. Make a side port at 7 o'clock. And I try to shape this knuckle with the vitrectomy cutter. I decrease the bottle height to about 30 centimeter and now see what happens. This cutter is not functioning. This cutter has been, been used earlier and it has been sterilized with ETO and it is not functioning. So immediately I use reflux and come out take another new cutter and cut this knuckle of vitreous. I'm careful not to cut the iris. And now I inject visco. See as I inject visco it goes back. And now my plan is to place this CTR capsular tension ring in the capsular bag. The leading end has gone into the capsular bag and now how to place the trailing end. See, I take a Macpherson's forceps, hold the trailing end just very near to the opening at the trailing end. Take the trailing end inside, use the Sinsky hook. The prong of the Sinsky hook goes into the opening and it dials the CTR in the capsular bag. If this Sinsky hook gets stuck, we have to use another hook to press over the CTR. And now is the time to manage this nucleus. I cannot use the side port which is at 2 o'clock because the dehiscence is just very near to it. So I make a side port at 4 o'clock and now I have to use the handpiece through 11 o'clock and 
the chopper through 4 o'clock. Let us see if we can do that. It is a little cumbersome, but we can do it. it goes, the handpiece goes, some superficial cortex is removed, very deep into the substance of the nucleus and on more chaff and this free nuclear fragment is emulsified. You must have noticed that after hydrodissection, I did not rotate the nucleus. So, whenever you do not rotate the nucleus, this is the way. You have to chop the nucleus, keep emulsifying the free nuclear fragments and by that time, the hydrodissection will be so good that you can rotate the nucleus. So, nucleus is managed and this epinucleus. Trying to hold the epinucleus, yes, it flipped by itself and I could remove it. And now, there is a thick layer of cortex over the posterior capsule and before I come out, I inject visco through another side port. Some more visco through the main port. And now, I have to remove this. What I do is, I take a Sinsky hook. One can use anything, you can use by manual. The, but the thing is, you have to move, mobilize the cortex in this way, move it tangentially first, get it free from the CTR and then pull centrally. And here, I can, I, I find that there are some strands. and the side port at 7 o'clock is very small. I cannot introduce the Sinsky through that. So, I took the keratome, enlarged it a bit and now I go again with the Simco cannula. This is a 23 cause Simco. cortex is being mobilized and removed. I caught vitreous strands, so I flushed it out and now form the antechamber. And now I take the cutter again to cut the vitreous strands. Irrigation through 7 o'clock side port and Cutter through the main port. And it is done. We have to be careful not to cause any damage to the capsular bag by the cutter, not to cause any damage to the iris by the cutter. So, we have to take care of that. Inject some visco and this cortex has to be removed. I go with the Simco again and this time I could remove the cortex. But again this strand comes. I hold the Simco and take the cutter. 
and cut the vitreous and now is the time to implant intraocular lens. A hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal aspheric intraocular lens goes into the capsular bag. The lens is dialed in such a way that one haptic gives additional support to the descent area. And now we have to remove the visco very nicely and one more time towards the end we have to check if some more vitreous strands have come out through it because the vitreous gets constantly continuously hydrated and it tends to come out through the dehiscent area and project into the anterior chamber. And now before I conclude, I take the cutter, I take the trams nolon acetate, can I cut and I find that there is a big knuckle of vitreous has come out there. Unless we do this last check, this will remain here and it will cause problem. So, take the cutter again. At this time, I go through the two side ports, irrigation through 7 o'clock and the cutter goes through the 4 o'clock side port and I cut the knuckle of vitreous. One vitreous strand is cut but still one part is in the antechamber and probably the other part is incarcerated in the wound. Before I come out, I inject air. And the vitreous strand comes out. And now we have to conclude the case. This is a bit of moxifloxacin. And then close the side ports by corneal stromal hydration. And then this is the final step. Form the antechamber nicely and conclude the case. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skill. It will give some ideas to manage such cases. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.